Hi students, welcome in chemistry classes. I am Priyanka Jain and you are watching analytical chemistry lectures in English. Okay, so here this lecture is on the HPLC, High Performance Liquid Chromatographic Technique. Okay, actually it is a liquid liquid chromatographic technique. As I have told you that the chromatographic techniques may be of different type based on the physical state of the stationary phase and the mobile phase. When both the stationary phase and the mobile phase are liquid, then such type of chromatographic technique is called the liquid liquid chromatographic technique. Actually, in HPLC, a liquid sample or a solid sample is dissolved in a suitable solvent and then Separation is carried out through a chromatographic column with the help of a liquid mobile phase. It means our mobile phase is liquid and the stationary phase is also liquid. Okay. Now the separation techniques may be different. We are using a column. Okay. We are using a column. Stationary phase is also liquid and the mobile phase is liquid. But the techniques of attachment of the solute to the stationary phase how the solute is interacting with the stationary phase may be of different types like it may be of adsorption there may be adsorption of the solute on the stationary phase or it may be partitioning right or it may be ion exchange technique or it may be size exclusion any type of the interaction can take place here okay but the technique is same this is liquid liquid type and we are using a column. Okay, now the important thing that we have to see here in the HPLC is its instrumentation. Okay, one important thing here is the instrumentation or we can call it the HPLC plumbing. See here, I have made a roughly diagram of the instrumentation. Actually, in HPLC, there are two columns. This one column is called the guard column and there is another column that is called the analytical column actually in the analytical column the whole performance is done okay this is the basic chromatographic column where the separation is taking place in the analytical column the most important type of the column that is used in the hplc is made up of stainless steel and its diameter is between 2.1 mm to 4.6 mm. Now these columns are packed with the silica particles. We are using here porous silica particles of 3 to 10 micrometer diameter. Okay, 3 to 10 micrometer diameter porous silica particles we are using that may be of spherical size or they may be irregular, but we have to use the silica particles. Now a liquid phase is coated upon these silica particles so that is making the stationary phase okay so in the this in this in this analytical column that we are taking this is made up of steel its diameter is 2.1 to m 4.6 mm and here we are using 3 to 10 micrometer sized silica particles porous silica particles are filled here okay now, what is the use of this guard column? What is this guard column? How we can use this and why we are using it? Okay, why we are using it? Actually, there are two problems in the HPLC. When we are using HPLC chromatographic, there may be two types of problems that will shorten the lifetime of the analytical column. First is that the solute binds the stationary phase irreversibly. Okay, the solute that we are using here can bind it irreversibly it can degrade the columns performance and it can decrease the availability of stationary phase okay second problem is that the particulate material injected with the sample can also clog the analytical column okay so there are two important problems one is that the our solute can bind irreversibly to the stationary phase and secondly this material can clog the analytical column and this our analytical column is very much expensive this column is highly expensive so we cannot shorten its lifetime so what we are doing we are using a ordinary column okay this column is less expensive this is less expensive so firstly 
we pass the solute through this guard column so that all the effect comes on this guard column and our analytical columns it will save this will remain safe okay so for its safety just we are using the guard column now see here you can see here what is this in this this is the solvent reservoirs actually this is the specific feature of the hplc instrumentation we are using several solvent reservoirs actually this is used to change the mobile phase composition what is our mobile phase what is our stationary phase we will see somewhat later firstly we are seeing the instrumentation so actually in this process we have to change the composition of the mobile phase okay when we are using gradient elution then we have to change the composition of mobile phase so what we are using we are using several solvent reservoirs okay before using the mobile phase the solvents must be treated to remove the dissolved gases different type of gases are dissolved here like o2 like n2 and these gases can produce bubbles okay so we will have to treat it so that these dissolved gases can be removed now this mobile phase here here is the mobile phase these are the mobile phases that is present here okay these mobile phases are now passed through here this is the pump it is passed through this now by this action of this pump these whole solvents are passed here okay this is pulse damper and it is acting as a valve okay this is acting as a valve and this will pass the exactly specific solvent that we wants okay then there is a loop injector this is called loop injector actually the sample is introduced in the hplc columns by using this loop injector okay so by this loop injector the sample will come to this guard column and here all the impurities will remain here and the safe solute will come to this expensive analytical column and then we comes to the detector at the last of this whole instrumentation there is detector the most important detector that we use is spectroscopic detectors that we are using in the hplc chromatography when we are using the uv visible detector then our chromatogram is a plot of absorbance and the elution time all right so this is all about the instrumentation now we see what is the stationary phase and what is the mobile phase in liquid liquid chromatography here we are using liquid liquid chromatography so in liquid liquid chromatography our stationary phase will always be a liquid both the stationary and the mobile phases are liquid so here the stationary phase is a liquid film coated on the packing material what is our packing material here as i have told you we are using porous silica particles so that is making our packing material so a liquid film is coated on the packing material that is of 3 to 10 micrometer porous silica particles it means we have to use the silica particles and then we have to coat it with the liquid film this will make our stationary phase actually there may be two types of the chromatography technique one is called normal phase chromatography in normal phase chromatography the stationary phase is polar and mobile phase is non polar while in the reverse phase chromatography reverse phase chromatography is actually the most commonly used technique in the hplc here the thing will be just reverse the stationary phase will be non polar and mobile phase is polar all right now see the mobile phase mostly in the reverse phase separation when we are using reverse phase chromatographic technique in reverse phase chromatographic technique our mobile phase is a buffer solution of water we are using buffer aqueous solution here this will make our polar mobile phase okay and one thing you should note here that the ph of the solution will be less than 7.5 why we are using this because in the basic solution our silica that we are using here will get hydrolysis okay so silica particle can undergo hydrolysis so we cannot use the basic solution so the ph of the solution will be less than 7.5 
Now, one more important thing is the elution. The elution order of the solutes in HPLC is governed by the polarity. When we are taking the normal phase, when we are using the normal phase chromatographic technique, here in normal phase, stationary phase is polar. So, what will happen? The least polar solute. When we are using the least polar solute, so the least polar solute will spend a less time, a little time on the stationary phase because it is less polar and our stationary phase is polar. So, it will elute firstly from the column. Okay, while the polar solute will come at the last. Okay, and one more thing, the retention time. Retention time is actually controlled by selecting the mobile phase. If we use the less polar mobile phase, then what will happen? The process will happen slowly. Okay, when we are using less polar mobile phase, then this whole process goes on slowly. So the elution becomes slower and slower and so the retention time will get longer and higher the retention time more easily we can separate out the solutes so retention time should be higher and for this purpose we are using less polar mobile phases okay now the elution may be of two type one is called the isocritic elution and another is called the gradient elution in isocritic elution when the separation is done with a single mobile phase. The composition of the mobile phase remain fixed throughout the process. Then such type of process is called the isocritic solution. It means in isocritic solution, the composition of mobile phase remains fixed throughout the process. Another type is gradient elution. In gradient elution, actually what happens, it is often difficult to find out a single mobile phase composition that is suitable for all the solutes. So, we cannot take a single mobile phase. Okay. So, we will have to change the composition of the mobile phase time by time. By changing the composition of mobile phase time by time, we can solve this problem. Okay. For a reverse phase separation, the initial mobile phase is relatively poor. And as the separation progresses, the mobile phase composition is made less polar. It means firstly we are taking a polar mobile phase and then we are decreasing its polarity so that the separation can take place. Okay. So when the composition of mobile phase is changed with time, such type of elution is called the gradient elution. Okay. So this is whole important things about the HPLC chromatography. I hope you will like this video. If you are liking, please comment me. And if you have any problem, you can also comment me. And if you are liking the videos, please share it. And please subscribe the channel. Thank you.